doesn't it? With uh, some kind of technical issue. Most important? Nice. Alrighty then. Welcome. Um, yeah. I am going to attempt to continue where we left off in the uh, beginner's guide or the basic offense and defense guide uh, tutorial whatever word you want to use for it I'm almost ready yeah that is alrighty then so uh, where we left off last time we kept it very busy uh, not, not busy but it was simple uh, with uh, the attacks, you had the regular attacks, you had the uh, charged attacks, and you had the push attack. All right, uh, for uh, defense, you had the block, you had the, that was a jump, you had the dodge, and you have the push. Um, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna put this together. Now, I did mention last time, because I was not able to keep it as simple as I wanted, it's, uh, it's because everything ties together in Vermin type, so uh, it's hard to just cut off at certain points because everything changes into another thing. But anyway, here we go, rambling again. Uh, so what I was mentioning was that uh, every weapon has its own chain of attacks or a sequence. Um, the sword and dagger on the elf goes swoosh, swoosh, dagger and stab. So sword, sword, dagger, stab. Okay. Um, I also mentioned that you can manipulate uh, because if you're just spamming then you're gonna do this sequence over and over again okay uh, if you want to skip one of these so if I only want to do these two slashes because there's something in front of me then I can do these two and then just stop attacking but then you have to kind of wait for it to reset and then you do it again if you want to do it faster you just block if you throw a block in there it resets the chain and the block doesn't have to be an actual like holding it. You can just click it. That's enough. So click, 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 click. There you go. All right. So every weapon has its own sequence, and you can manipulate the sequence by throwing in a block. Got it. Good. Okay. Now I'm not gonna go through every single weapon because that will take ages. So as long as you are aware that this is a thing in the game, you can then experiment. And I expect you to, uh, which is also how you find your weapon. Uh, a lot of people talk about like OP weapons and weapons that are like the best in slot and all that. It's, there's not really a best in slot weapon because it, I genuinely believe that it literally comes down to your flow. And by that, I mean the way that you play the game, like the way that everything makes sense to you. Some weapons feel better to you than other weapons. Some will feel clunky and slow and weird and others just flow. Some people love two-handed hammers. I don't like the two-handed hammer. For me, it's weird and clunky. Um, some people hate the dual daggers because they're, it's too like pinpointy kind of like they, they get surrounded and they get hit. Yes, dual daggers requires you to dodge and push a lot more, but I love the fact that they can do massive damage to uh, both armored and normal and like they're versatile in that way. And if you can manipulate hordes, like you're obviously not the one to clear the hordes with your daggers. You can eventually by just dodge dancing around them and hurting them into, you know, in, in your block cone in front of you. We're going to get back to that. Um, so, yeah, anything that makes the flow of your game feel more fluid. Yeah, is a better weapon for you. And in order for you to find that weapon, you need to try them all. Some of them will feel, feel great. Some of them will feel weird. Some of them you will learn to love uh, because once you get to a point where you can, where it's not, 
it's no longer just the weapon that makes you flow anymore. You will make any weapon flow, if that makes sense. Uh, when you get to that point, then some of the more clunky weapons or the ones that might not, not have felt amazing for you in the beginning, you will see that they have certain traits and attributes to them. I'm not talking about the properties and, and, and traits on the actual weapon, but the way that they function that uh, opens up for interesting gameplay. Um, yeah. For example, you are able to create a pickaxe for Barden that can one-shot Chaos Warriors. Yeah, I know. Anyway, okay, so the idea is that we want to tie all this together. Now, when you are, let me see if I can try and structure this so it actually makes sense. With the attacks, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are aware of what you're fighting. If you're fighting regular enemies, you can do regular attacks with most weapons. Some weapons on their regular attacks will have armor penetrating, like, for example, Barden's one-handed axe. Um, one of the, th the ways that you can find out what your weapon can and cannot do uh, is go out there and try. Or you can come back here. Uh, I think I showed where these target dummies are. And you can try them. You got regular here, you got armored up here. So if I go up here and hit one of these guys, it does zero damage. And you can see that red triangle at the crosshairs, which shows me or tells me that I'm not penetrating the armor. So it doesn't matter how many times I hit like this, I'm not doing any damage. If I do a critical hit, however, let's see what I can get. Well, there was one in there anyway. There was one. Critical hits always penetrate armor. Um, so you can just spam on an armor and just hope for a few criticals. Now the this one doesn't hit, that one does damage, so no. No. Yes, that one does 600 for some reason. No, it did not. Oh, because I hit the head. Yeah, okay. So hit damage still. Alright, fine. The stab hits armor. Anyway, on this one, penetrates armor. Yeah, so you can use that. Uh, otherwise, you can go into your charged attacks. Uh, rule of thumb is regular or light attacks will not penetrate armor. Charged attacks will. Some weapons have pen uh, armor penetration on their regular attacks. Great, but they are usually also some of the more uh, clunky ones, like uh, the two-handed hammer, uh, the uh, two-handed, a lot of the two-handed actually, uh, two-handed axe, not the two-handed sword for some reason. Anyway. Um, yeah, okay, so defense. You should, at any time, you should be trying to uh, use dodge. Now, if you block, okay, let's start at block. When you block, it costs stamina, right? So anytime, whatever weapon you're using, if you're holding block, you can see the little uh, stamina shields. I got four shields on this one. Uh, the reason I have that is because they got three on their own and I have two stamina. Two stamina equals one shield. One stamina is half a shield. And yes, it will actually display half a shield sometimes. But I got four. When taking incoming attacks and I block it, they will drain the shields, the stamina. Uh, every weapon has an active block range or angle rather. So if you're looking at where it says stamina three in the uh, right hand corner, uh, that shield with the gray angle shows that anything within this angle, if I'm blocking, is gonna drain stamina normally. Anything outside, which means behind me and to my side, will drain twice as much stamina because block works 360 degrees all the way around you. Um, so if you're blocking, there's a, I always say there's a the rule number one in Vermitide is there's always something behind you. So if you're not, if you are in the middle of an encounter, which means combat has started, you're not just moving from point A to B to get to another area. Like there's uh, battle horns, rats are coming or chaos wars, whatever you're in combat. If you're not swinging, you should be blocking. Um, and your head basically should be on a swivel. You always want to check all the way around you. Uh, one of the things that you know, uh, hopefully, uh, through experience, is that whenever you hear that horde horn, 
Hordes in Vermintide 2 come from two sides. They will always come from in front of you and then also from the back. They can also you know jump down and come out of or whatever, but they're always attacking you from from two places. So you should know and expect it. So if I'm in an open area and I hear the horde warning, uh, what you want to do is you want to try and get to a position where they're not going to easily surround you. Uh, and you can do this by either moving sideways, so kind of they're coming towards you like this. If you move this way out of it, they kind of have to you know, go this way to get to you. If you can get your back up against the wall, or you can run forward meeting uh, the initial horde and try and thin them out before the horde coming from the back catches up to you. Um, this is also where the push comes in because you want to avoid being surrounded. And one of the ways you do that is by dodging out and away from things. And then if there's something, let's say there's some, something here in front of me, right? And I want to go this way, but it's, it's in my way. I have plenty of opponents here I'm fighting something and I want to go that way but there's something in my way I just push it out of the way and dodge around it um, if you are in the middle of combat I think it would be a great idea instead of using regular movement because you don't move faster than them any enemy can catch up to you in Vermitide there are very uh, there are a few exceptions if you have a lot of movement speed on you know trinket and talents and there's a few weapons that can increase movement speed by by doing certain attacks over and over again um that will still not outrun everything if you just had like basic equipment just doing normal stuff you're not outrunning anything so don't try there is no reason for you to try and outrun anything they will catch up to you so what you want to do is you want to thin them out or you want to move with block and dodge instead of normal movement just you know, move around things by dodging instead. When it comes to dodge, sir, I'm just gonna read here. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, yeah. So, where was I? <laughs> yes, dodge. So the dodge can be used depending on which weapon you're using. Uh, so if I if I keep dodging. You see, I dodge too fast. But if I just spam it like this, I'm gonna end up jumping instead. Um, and that's because there is a, an in, what's it called? Innate, not innate, internal uh, timer for a dodge for how long that has to be between each dodge for it to be effective. If you dodge too fast, the dodge will get shorter. Um, some weapons have a specific number of dodges that you can do before they shorten to basically not doing anything and then turning into a jump. And as we mentioned in the basic, a jump is not the same as a dodge. Jumping does not have invulnerability frames, uh, dodging does. Uh, so play around with the different weapons, find out how quickly in succession you can dodge without turning it into a jump. Um, one of the ways that you can allow the timer to reset, uh, making your dodges more effective, is by blocking for a while or pushing the enemy away. Uh, pushing them will give you a little bit of time before they get back up, uh, especially if it's rats that you can actually knock in their asses. Um, bigger enemies will just get like staggered for a second, but that's enough to get your dodge ready. Um, the reason you're dodging is because the block at some point will eventually run out um, of stamina, especially if you're getting surrounded. So you wanna get away from any situation where uh, there's too much hitting you at the same time. There are certain builds you can do with stamina regeneration or stamina recovery, it's called. Um, if you have the handmaiden who has an aura of stamina recovery for everyone and you have a shield and you have i think stamina recovery on the trinket maybe trinket or charm trinket i think um you can make a shield built where any amount of regular enemies cannot break your shield uh you regenerate it too fast if you are attacking like if i'm using shield you use uh, stamina to push 
So if I'm attacking like this, the stamina, as you can see, is very slowly coming back, right? As long as I keep pushing, if I'm using stamina, it has like a, a short cooldown before it starts regenerating again. Now, how fast these shields come back depends on your stamina recovery. So if I use all my shield right now, I can't push anymore because I have no more stamina, right? So if I'm waiting for this, now it starts, okay? Half, whole shield, half a shield, whole shield, half a shield. If I had stamina recovery, it would go much, much faster. Um, where the danger comes in with the stamina, uh, because even if you make a, what people would call a tank build, or a, a lot of people get into this like DPS tank, healer, whatever, there's not really, it's not set up that way in, in Vermintide, because anyone can kind of take on some of the roles. There are, yes, certain careers that have talents that support a more tanky build. Um, yeah, but if you if you have a lot of stamina recovery, there are still those overhead hits by storm vermins and chaos warriors that will most likely completely break your block, like drain all your stamina. Um, you can also build with uh, block cost reduction. And then also, then they also can't just break your block. There are certain attacks in the game that is designed to, from enemies, that is designed to break your block completely. When your block is broken, let's say, okay, let's, let's, let's do that. When your block is broken, when you have no more shields, uh, by whatever means that happens, if you're out of shields and, and like the last half shield, something hits you and your shield, your block is broken, you get staggered and loses some of your movement so you'll move slow and you get staggered um now the good thing about stamina is that as long as you have just half a shield you won't take any damage from any regular attack or even charged attack from regular enemies there are a few exceptions this is rubber tight uh boss attacks certain boss attacks not every boss but certain boss attacks will do damage whether you block them or not for example the ogre rats two-fist slam if you block that you'll reduce the damage but you will still take damage regardless of how many shields you have um, so dodge that instead okay mm, let me just double check this thing here I, I wrote all this shit down and I have forgotten half of it and not taken it in like step by step order that I wanted to do Let's see, uh, the blocking, or to say that uh, basic defense, uh, there's always something behind you, where it's 360 uh, degrees. All right. Um, mm, yeah. Okay, and dodging is, yes, with the consecutive dodges instead of going into jump. All right, good. Pushing is, uh, yeah, pushing itself may seem more offensive than it is defensive, but in this game, game mechanic wise, it, it what it does is it gives us space. It allows us to reposition by pushing obstacles out of the way, uh, as well as staggering enemies and uh, interrupt a lot of the incoming attacks, which effectively cancels them. Uh, yeah, I talked a little bit about positioning. We can talk a little bit more about that. All right. so. Um, positioning in, in Vermintide is um, not just about pushing your way out of a circle and not getting surrounded. Uh, what you basically are trying to do is move to a position where you will always have the majority of whatever is attacking you in front of you, in your line of sight, and also in your effective block angle. Um, you want to use stuff like... Uh, there are certain walls or fences that it's good like if you brush up against those they can't you know surround you they can only be from the sides and then in front of you this is a good way of doing it also if you notice that oh there's a door right here uh, and you have a whole horde chasing you all right then get to this position here and hold it there because you have you're funneling them into a position where there is no one that can surround you right here because they have to come through the door to get to you so everyone is in front of you um that also makes for great uh penetration attacks with bows or with uh flamethrowers and all that kind of stuff like if you can kind of conga line them up and yeah um 
You can also use uh, drop down and climbing mechanics like jumping down like this forces enemies into a drop down or a climb up mechanic. Which means as long as they're climbing or dropping down they're not attacking. Uh, and you can still attack them while they're doing their animation thing. Um, yeah, anything else? Uh, yeah, keep checking behind you. Um, you can do this safely while you dodge and block. Um, and you basically want to be aware of what is an immediate threat and what is coming. So if I'm fighting something here, right, and I'm just dodging from side to side, I'm trying to do this, this, I'm throwing in a few blocks and pushes, you know, just to manipulate whatever is in front of me. Uh, sometimes I just want to do this. Just want to do this. I just want to check. Is there anything behind me? One of the ways that you do that, you do a couple of attacks, do this, then you, you, you push them, which gives you space enough to turn around, just check anything important here. Nope. All right. Back to fighting. If you keep in mind that uh, in Vermintide, it's like there's always something behind you. Then do a couple of attacks, kill a few things, do a push, turn around, just check, all right, and then get back into it. If you f hear sound cues, basically like pushing them, manipulating them, or go around them and check, now I can see the other way. Okay, now, right now, I know everything that is here, so I'll just push through, I'll hurt them into this area in front of me, and now I can see what's behind me. Um, be aware of your surroundings, be aware of well, that's actually uh, that brings us to awareness. Awareness in this game is 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 very critical, and Vermintide does an amazing job. Is one of the features that I love the most in this game. It tells you what is going to happen. Every single thing that comes at you in this game has its own sound cue. Hordes have the horn. The hook rats have the clanking skulls. The gunners have the grinding gears. The gas rats, the hissing sound, the assassins, the whispers, all of them. Everything has a sound cue, which is why you should you should try and practice whenever you're running around on a mission. Anytime you hear a sound cue, just call it out. Go like, that's an assassin. That's a hook rat. Because once you know that the sound, the sound tells you that this is coming, you should be looking for it. Once you get comfortable with dodging and blocking and pushing, hordes no longer pose a threat to you. They can be manipulated, they're not important. The only reason you want to thin them out is because they are, what the horde is best at is denying you access to areas, meaning they can block you in. A boss in itself is not dangerous, they're slow. You can dodge out of the way, you can move around them, they're very, very easy to manipulate. But they hit insanely hard, especially if you're locked into position because a horde has surrounded you or there's something in the way you can't dodge that way because something is blocking your way. Which is also why if you're fighting bosses, just have whoever has aggro from the boss just hold block and dodge it, dance it around till you clear everything else and then get back on, on the boss. When you get better at the whole dodge dance, there are certain ways that you can, for example, the ogre rat. If you go up towards it, it starts doing this. The moment the hands are up there, you dodge back, it slams into the ground. If you then step into it again, it'll be like, oh, and it'll redo it again. It'll do it over and over again. If you can time that stepping in, dodging back, stepping in, dodging back, if you can time that, it's called dodge dancing. If you can do that, you can basically, by yourself, just keep the ogre rat in one place, and you do have time to attack it, while you're dodging you actually if you were doing this perfectly you don't even need block the reason you're blocking while you're dodging is that if you're a little bit off on the timing you don't take full damage because your block will yeah uh mitigate some of that damage um if the boss changes uh focus on another player then just have that player start doing the dodge dancing or move it around just hold block and just walk backwards that's enough um, because the only attack that Ogre Rat does that goes through your shield is the double fist slam and it stops and does the animation so if you're just walking backwards while holding block you will actually be out of range by the time the fists hit the ground if you don't have more than 250 latency but anyway 
Um, so just holding block and walking backwards is actually enough. And you don't have to walk like straight back all the time. You can walk around like backwards in a circle and around. So just again, be aware. Whenever it's done its attacks, there is a, a short break before it does anything else. Use that break to, you know, look over your shoulder, turn around, see what's there. Um, plan your way through whatever is left. Is there a horde coming over there? Don't go that way. This area over here seems more open and free. Okay, then go that way. Um, yeah. So, what you want to do is when there's a horde there and there are specials there and there are armored there or bosses there, whatever, you want to choose, you want to have a priority. Um, some people deal better with certain elites and specials than others. For me, I feel the most important ones to get out of the way are the disablers, Hograts, Assassins, and Leeches. Whenever they spawn, get rid of them. Um, gun rats can be very, very annoying. Gas rats have become more of a an ally because their gas also kills their own. So you can kind of bait and a gas rat to throw its globe where you are, dodge out of it, and then just stand on the edge of the smoke and push everything in and keep them running towards you. And they, yeah, so gas rats can help you kill off hordes. Uh, gunners are a little bit different. They do hit their own, but they are just annoying. But a gunner, just go out of line of sight, go, you know, behind a wall. Um, easy, and he can't get to you. He'll finish his round of, of attack. He'll then, you know, start walking towards to find a line of sight to you. And you won't start shooting till they see you. So you can even use a tree to just, you know, walk around the tree opposite of it and then just jump out and go, ha ha, and kill it. Uh, so not that bad. Whereas a gas rat would just throw a globe on the tree and it was around the tree and you'd still get hit. Uh, here we go. A lot of people, especially in the beginning, uh, have issues with armored units. The reason they have issues with armored units is because they have still not discovered the power of charged attacks. Um, and the fact that Chaos Warriors are insanely slow and that their attacks have a very specific pattern that can be quite easily dodged. Unless you have three or four of them and their attacks are slightly off on the timing of each other. So instead of they all go boom with their attack, it goes boom, 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 boom. It's a little bit of a problem. But then the way that you do that is that you force their attacks to hit at the same time by going towards them instead of trying to get away from them. Uh, sometimes going, if you just feel you're just <laughs> dodging, dodging, and your dodge is kind of like mixing between dodges and jumps because you don't have the time to, then try just to do a step forward, just to kind of break that flow of the horde just trickling in. Because if they're like attacking, 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 attacking after each other, if you step into them, they're gonna <clears throat> like all get into the same position and their attacks will be more synchronized much easier than for you to dodge all of it in one dodge instead of you dodge five attacks and then immediately three other attack lands because they were not synchronized. Does that make sense? Um, so sometimes going towards them and pushing is better than just keep <laughs> I'm dodging, I need to get away. Um, another way of syncing them up better is go up somewhere and then drop down because then they all have to stop at that ledge and drop down there you can kind of deal with stuff here and yeah. use the environment. All right, so let me just double check. Yeah, I think I ended this when I wrote, I was like, um, learning and recognizing the various sound cues and vermin type will significantly increase your chances of success as you will know what is coming, what to expect and what to watch out for, exactly what to focus on and so on. All right. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna try and keep this very short. So we went through sequencing and manipulating that with block. We went through actual blocking and the fact that it blocks 360 degrees around you. We went through dodging and that certain weapons allow you to dodge more frequently without uh, shortening the distance or without turning into a jump, play around with it. Uh, pushing gives you uh, a bit of distance 
uh, which allows you to reposition or give you that short respite where they're not attacking you. Uh, also, your push can with when you're hitting certain breakpoints uh, of hero power uh, will interrupt certain attacks. Um, but that also comes down to your to the weapon that you're using. Uh, certain weapons have higher stagger or higher uh, and higher cleave and so on. If they have higher stagger, they have a bigger chance of interrupting certain attacks. Um, for example, the the plague monks. Once they go into the animation, you probably notice that it doesn't matter if you're trying to push them or even bash them or whatever, they just complete their raging flurry of blows. But there is one shield, the Bretonian shield thing that uh, the Grail Knight came with. If you just do a normal shield bash, not the slam, but just the that one, just bash them. That weapon in particular, for some reason, can! actually interrupt them it's I think it's one of the only weapons that I've noticed that can actually just get them out of that animation and knock them around which is kind of cool uh, yeah. there are also certain weapons that can interrupt the storm vermin has three attacks it has that lunge it has the side swing and it has the overhead the lunge and the side swing most weapons can interrupt um, by a push or even by uh, attacking it first the overhead uh, the few weapons uh, can interrupt. The best way is dodge it. It's a slow attack. Expect it to come and just dodge out of the way. If you have a bunch of rats or whatever enemies in front of you and there's a storm vermin, you're looking at the storm vermin. You don't need to look at anything else because you're just blocking and dodging from side to side, avoiding most shit. But the one thing that you really want to avoid is that overhead because it will most likely destroy all of your block or it'll stun you um, stagger you stun you which will open you up for everyone else's attack uh, another thing storm Romans do if you're too close to them they will actually push you and you might have noticed that pushing uh, if you push a shielded enemy twice you open them up storm Romans can do the same to you so even if you're holding your shield, if two of them pushes you, you're then open. Which means if there's a patrol of storm vermin and you run right into them, you're just holding your shield. Well, if two of them push you, that means the chain of attacks that's coming immediately after from whatever else is there all go through. It doesn't matter if you have full shields, they still hit you because you've been opened, so to speak. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, I'm gonna do one, gonna run a oh. one last thing I want to just mention, just to make you aware that, that it exists. Um, when doing charged attacks, most people in the beginning, they will just hold it in until the animation itself finishes, right? You don't have to do that. You can just, once the animation starts, you can let it go. Let it go. No. That means that you attack faster. The reason that you can hold it this long is not to charge it up harder. It is for timing purposes. It means, for example, if um, if I was using, let's say, I don't think I have on this one, but if I was using a two-handed hammer, for example, for example, bonk. Now, I can do this and just charge and then swing or I can go swing it hits for the same it's the same amount of damage same amount of stagger hits the same amount of targets it's just faster but if I do this and then I hit everything in front of me now this has a lot of stagger and cleave so it might have pushed back a lot of enemies so if I do this and go straight into the sorry I do this straight into that the second hit might just go over the head of everyone because they've been pushed back, some have fallen down. So I might do this and then I might charge and then go forward and then get them. So the charge allows you to also like reposition yourself and get the right timing in. Like this is where I want to hit him. Now I want to hit him a couple of fast time and then come in from that side. So 
don't see the charge up as the more I charge it up, the harder I hit. It's basically just there for timing purposes to make sure that you get the space or close in enough to actually make the attack connect. There are exceptions. Of course, this is Vermintide. One of the exceptions, uh, and again, this is why you want to uh, test things and play around with it. So the Rapier has two charges. This is a normal, this, and then up here is more. So if I do this, 2050, but if I charge it all the way, it that was a crit, ignore that, all the way, bonk, 3875. So from 2050 to 38, it's quite a difference. Which means that most people who play with the rapier, whenever they see an armor, it will start charging it up and then go in. Uh, again, it gives you the ability to time it better, but with this particular weapon, charging it up longer actually has a damage difference. You're still hitting it like a fucking truck with the normal stab, and you can probably just as fast as do too quick like this in the same time you do that, right? And actually end up doing more damage. So I usually end up just doing, you know, just no, like that, and like that, just too quick after each other. Um, because that's enough to kill stall moments if you hit the head. Body shots were different, that would have, that, yeah, it's not as much, but if I charge it all the way up, it's 13, which is not, not that great. Now, I'm using the, what's it called, the, uh, no, 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 what, flens, Jesus Christ. How was that out of my light of sight? Okay, I'm getting old. Okay, I'm using the flens, which is why you're seeing the uh, dot damage ticking up after I hit everything. Um, highly recommend it, because uh, this is fun, and then just watch it, just extra damage. Anyway, alright, okay, so let's try and go put all of this shit into uh, some kind of context. I am just going to do this, I'm going to do host and set it to private. We will do a... Guaranteed bosses in that one. Oh, so are we on these, actually. So, right, fine. All right, just do this one. People are probably uh, tired of seeing that particular one. I set it to private because I'll just bring the bots. Uh, we're keeping it on champion because that should give us enough um, leeway, whatever it's called, to talk during this and showcase a few things meaning not it's not too difficult and also not so easy that the bots will kill off everything before I even start showing what I want to show don't forget the coffee Um, a real oh, mm, great. I forgot to give uh, Krupper his uh, shield, whatever. So now he has a hammer. Great. Well, oh, shouldn't matter too much. And I managed to get the. <laughs> no care. I did not get my uh, box set up the way that I wanted to. Doesn't matter. It should be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, I'll show where the Tomes and Grimoires are in this as well. Alright. Um, so, whenever... Yeah, I, yeah, I, I took that hit. Uh, a good way to engage in combat... Oh, there's archers over there. Is by, when you go in, start pushing them. Because it'll interrupt... Alright, we need to get rid of... more over there okay I heard that more over there no. okay there is more oh nice shot okay 
as you can see, as long as there's anything, like if I'm scouting for something, I'm holding block. I just want to make sure that that if there's anything sneaking up behind me, which there most likely is, they at least, you know, get my block. Alright. Okay. The only time I'm not blocking is if I'm moving, you know, in a safe space. Like right now there's nothing around us, right? I can hear there's a Chaos Warrior somewhere. Uh, I don't know if it was that guy. Oh. Another uh, thing that you should notice is there's a sound in the game uh, that sounds like shh. That means something just tried to hit you from behind or is about to hit you from behind. All right, do we want to... So we have the horn for the horde. We have the patrol, which we just aggro. All right, so this is a good time to drop one of these. Just to be sure. Now, I'm watching out for the bigger guys, right? Because those are the, the actual threats. So I'm going to go like this. Okay, move out of that. Move out of that one. So if you notice, he's going to... If he lifts up that one, just dodge out of the way. Oh, there's a horde behind me. Okay. So... I'm just trying to keep everything in front of me. Checking nothing else out there. We have another horde coming. And a globe deer somewhere. It's in there. Okay, so... Oh, and I have the pissing shot from last time. Oh, yes, I am saying pissing shot and not piercing shot. Because that's how I feel about it. Alright, so... The, the entire setup of this is completely wrong, but it doesn't matter. The uh, principle is still the same. All right, so that quick. Oh, I'll just get that one. Oh, I actually got someone in. How is that possible? Didn't I set it to private? I was like, how is the bot doing that? Because <laughs> usually the bot won't go into like a flurry of a uh, with the guns, not like that anyway. Eh, fine. I'm guessing that sideswipe was annoying all right plenty of healing in here so the first tome is up there and the way to get up there is by jumping on these hay bales onto the uh, the fence and then you have to stand on this pole otherwise you can't get all the way up and then grab this and that's fine all right so There he is. So, this charge attack is fine when there is a lot of enemies in front of me. Uh, but the one I really want to use is the second one. This does a lot of damage to armor. One of the ways to get into that is by doing the push attack first and then... So if I do push attack and then into charge immediately, it skips the first one. So as you can see, I'm just doing a few and then checking behind me that they're not uh, getting too close. Just making sure that I know they're coming from there, I know they're coming from there. So now this one down here is getting closer. Okay, got a couple on the way. Launch into it. There we go. Making sure that we're like, every time I'm moving, as you can see, I'm, I'm dodging around it instead. At certain times, it may be slightly excessive. You may not need to dodge every single time. So for me, it's just as long as you're dodging, you're not getting hit. So why not? And you are moving anyway. Yeah. All righty. Okay, because no, that's just one of the big guys. All right, so as you can see, the smaller ones, I can interrupt them. When they try to attack, I can actually just push them. The big guy, uh, one of his attacks, I can interrupt. The other one, I can. Uh, red, that's fine. Oh, 
So right now we have from there and from there, right? There should be more coming from up here at some point. Yep, there they are. So hordes, like I said, always attack you from two places, usually front and back. I'm staying close to the fence here because that means they're not gonna come from behind. So I don't need to check behind as much. I can just, now you can hear all the special sounds starting. We have an assassin coming. We have a leech coming. There's the assassin. Leech. Pop right there. There's a couple of them. Okay. I didn't get any of them, so that doesn't matter. As long as they die, it's fine. Uh, ammunition. Do I need... I have to take all of them. It doesn't matter. Okay. Also in Vermintide, you are not getting experience per kill. It's not like uh, AD and D where everything gives you experience, so you don't have to clear the map. Uh, staying in to kill more to get more experience is pointless. You get experience from completing the map, people alive, tomes and grimoires collected, difficulty, and quick play. That's about it. Gas rat. Okay, fire rat. Right in my face. Where's the fire rat? In there somewhere. Yep. All right. It's all good. All right, so we have uh, okay, full players in my private game. Take that. I have to go back and check. It's fine. We'll we'll just turn it into a normal run. Uh, in this house, in this house, uh, in the basement, you uh, can place a barrel. This one. And uh, yeah, you blow up this wall. Once that's blown up, you can then go get the first grimoire. Grimoires will reduce the max health of the entire team. Um, but they will award 15 points to the loot meter at the end per grimoire. You need a hundred plus to get an Emperor's Chest. 10 points for quick play, 10 points for successful mission, 5 points per loot die, 10 points per tome, uh, 15 per grimoire. So, just getting in here, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to keep them, because they can't go over here, so they're just going to come from this area right here. There's a leech in a moment. Three, two, one. And a hook rat. And another leech. Okay. Yep. So when you hear the leech, it's about three to four seconds before they pop into existence. So expect them. To, uh, to show up and just kill them. You can dodge their attack. Um, if you know that they're gonna spawn in, just expect them. When you hear the <laughs> when they spawn, just turn around and shoot them. All right, then. Here we go. Let me display exactly how not to use the piercing shot. Hello. Yeah, that's not how you use it. Uh, piercing shot, if you can do uh, headshots reliably, it just resets the cooldown. You can use it over and over and over again, as long as you uh, keep doing headshots. I am not good at headshots, especially on Bob. Oh, uh, we call the Chaos Spawn Bob. So as you can see, when I have the aggro, I just dodge away from it. I just hold log and dodge away and let everyone else do damage. There is another Grimoire uh, he's going for. He has to jump over here and then over here and then go around. There's a gas right somewhere. Okay. 
Yep, it's already there. And it is right there. Right? So it's right up there. Cool. There is a tome on this roof up here. I believe, yep, Sienna took it. You can jump from beneath and pick it up. You don't have to go up these stairs, run over here and jump out that big window. You don't have to do that. Uh, if you're not playing with bots, you can just, you can skip, you can jump this corner right here. But if you're playing with bots, you want to run all the way like this. Because the bots, if you don't do that, will try and jump and they will keep falling down over and over again till they die. Yeah. Good times. Alright, so they they drop down, which means I should do the same. Because if I get stuck up here, they can't get to me. There's a loot rat way back there. Okay. Cast rat. Got it. Okay. Then. This is another... Uh, point in the return, another drop down. So the last tome is, if you follow this river, it's in a small box in a little nook, if that's what it's called. A little recess, a little... Bonk, bonk, bonk. Hello, Tessa. Didn't see you there, as usual. Uh, yeah, here we go. Full tomes, full grims. Now we just gotta complete. You always wanna try at least stay in twos. You don't want someone just running off on their own. Um, there is a built in mechanic in the game that will spawn extra disablers if you get a certain distance away from the party. So if one person runs off on their own, the game will spawn in hook rats, leeches, or assassins. Uh, basically the game's way of saying stay the fuck together. Oh, that was an amazing shot of... I built all my range builds to uh, one shot um, body shots on anything but stuff like Chaos Warriors uh, because I don't want to be dependent on headshots. We can pull these as well. Sometimes you want to pull in the game just to get a certain area cleared up. Now you can see right now I'm getting surrounded, right? So I'm dodging sideways out of this. I'm using the drop down and climbing and I can get off a few of these. Uh, the big guys have these. All right, so he flanked me faster. Berserkers. So right now I'm just holding block, dodging sideways. I'll try and see if we can get to. Uh... All right. There's a uh, healing there if he needs. Where's the uh, there he is? Okay. So you could hear that <laughs> like it's like on the way to burn you. And you just know it's there. Um, if you have your speakers set up decently, you can actually hear where they're coming from. So I'm staying up against this wall. Okay, Dwarf went down again, so I'm gonna go. He's gonna slam down there. So you basically want to get in and resurrect or revive people. That's more important than you clearing whatever else is there. Because while you're clearing, they're still hitting him, and if they hit hard enough, he'll die, and then you can't revive him anyway. So just get in there, hold block, and revive. Um, you actually don't even have to hold block in mode. It's, it's grandfathered in in Mermatite 2, so you will auto-block the moment you revive. Uh, just realize that if you're not holding block while reviving, then the moment you have revived, your block drops. So if you want to continue blocking after you do the revive, um, make sure to hold that block. Alright, so there's a gas rat somewhere. Bonk, bonk, opening up the shields. 
All right. All right, there's another one. All right, you don't want to stand in that. Okay. They're fine, they're fine. All right, I'll go open these. Um, so there's a timer that runs in the background that will spawn in various things, in, but there's also scripted events where whenever you enter a certain area, certain definite things will happen. There are a few modifiers where it will, for example, it can be either a boss or a patrol, uh, never both. And you usually in this game, I don't remember exactly how it is, but I don't think you can get two bosses in a row. Like you'll get a patrol, then a boss, then if you have a boss, you'll get a patrol next time and so on. I don't think it's just, which is why we have Twitch integration uh, for the most part, because that just fucks up everything and it can be many things at any time, which is fun. Okay. Uh, honk. Okay. We're fine. We're fine. There's a gun rat somewhere. Anyone ping it? It's far away. Jesus. Okay, I can't even see it. Okay. He saw it. Nice. Alright, so let's just jump down and get some chaos going here. Alright, so you can see they're coming from everywhere. There's a spot here to the side. I can just dodge this way. Now they're filling up, so I can't go that way. So I'll push them. There's an assassin coming also now. So I'm going to go to a place where it will most likely not come from. Because right here, it's... I should be able to see it there. Nice shot. Okay. We're moving here. We're doing that jumping onto the ladder. Um, if you want to jump onto ladders, make sure that you jump from a distance, not immediately when you get close to it, because uh, otherwise you'll just have those things where you actually latch onto it and then jump off of it. Best way to navigate ladders in Vermintide is to just walk into them. Oh, there's an assassin. And a big guy, just dodge that one. Bonk. Okay. From behind, as we know. Just trying to keep them, you know, in front of me. As, as I'm moving, I'm using the dodge diagonally, like to check behind me. Checking. There's an assassin coming. It's close. I can hear it. There he is. Okay. Well done. Yeah. So, I'll end the stream after this. Uh, that was a very long rant and just a quick run. So, yeah. Sorry that this is uh, just me talking about a lot of stuff but that's the way i like it you know have a cup of coffee let's have a chat about it so i hope that i um touched on a few things that helps you bring everything together for a better flow of the game um feel free to comment or like or follow or ask any questions i respond at least for now anyway to everything because uh not that busy. So yeah, and I will try and prepare the final version of the tutorial uh, where I will talk a little bit more about breakpoints. Uh, and well, it's basically just breakpoints that's, that's left. Uh, what time is it? I'll do another run with these guys. But I'll end, I'll end the uh, tutorial, otherwise it just gets too long. So um, I am saying bye for now, and then I'm jumping in with these guys. So have fun. See you next time. Bye.